Hello Scorpios, I'm here for a general reading for the sign of Scorpio. So anyone who um, has Scorpio strongly in their chart could resonate with this reading. My beautiful friends, I welcome you into this space just as you are, just in this moment. I'm happy to have you and I look forward to seeing what story is here for this group of Scorpio people. Please remember Scorpios that you are all different ages, you are all living in different parts of the world, going through different types of experiences. So not every reading will apply, uh, but hopefully there's something here that will help you as you move forward in your journey. As I get into your energy, Scorpio, I am a little breathless. So um, I'm kind of excited to see what's here for you for this group of Scorpios. Let's go and see what is the current energy period for this group of Scorpio people. What is the current energy for this group of Scorpio people, please? What is the current energy for this group of Scorpio people? Wow. What is the current energy, please, for this group of Scorpio people? Scorpios, this deck is called the Wheel of the Year. Wheel of the Year. All right. And what will Scorpio be stepping into in the next immediate future, the next immediate future, we're looking at the next seven to 10 days or the next couple of weeks or even the next three or four weeks. This is the next immediate future that's coming in for this group. Now, um, it would be arrogant of me to really put a time frame on it because this is a message for you. This is a message that I'm bringing forward um, through my abilities, but it is for you and it's for you to take and apply in your own situation. So um, I just feel like it's arrogant sometimes for us to really put a time frame on it. And I don't wish to do that, but I have asked for the next immediate incoming energy. So that to me is um, fairly soon, right? Fairly soon in the scheme of a year, in the scheme of a lifetime, right? We have to be we have to be understanding that everybody here is, is going through something different, all right? What is the next immediate energy? What is the next immediate energy that Scorpio would be stepping into? Woo. The next immediate energy that Scorpio will be stepping into. The next immediate energy that Scorpio will be stepping into. The next immediate energy that Scorpio will be stepping into. The next immediate energy that Scorpio would be stepping into. The next immediate energy that Scorpio would be stepping into. All right. And guidance for Scorpio, please. Guidance for Scorpio. Guidance for this beautiful group of Scorpio people. Guidance, please. Look at the sun flipped. It didn't come out, but it flipped. Beautiful sign, my friends. Beautiful sign. What is guidance here for Scorpios? My head's cold. There's something happening, Scorpio. <laughs> There's something happening. <sighs> what is guidance here? I can almost look at the Six of Cups flips, the Knight of Swords flips. There's something coming in and I can, it's super, the energy is like blasting out at me here. <sighs> guidance please for Scorpio. Guidance please for Scorpio. One more energy. I still feel the tingling. Um, when I shuffle, I can feel on my fingers the tingling if there's energy left. And I can still feel, there we go, so that comes out. Okay. Okay, beautiful Scorpios, let's get started again. This deck is called the Wheel of the Year. Um, and... This is the current energy. This is what this group of um, Scorpios is going through currently. Now, we know everybody's moving at different speeds. So this is something that you could have already experienced. It's something that you could be experiencing now or something that you can kind of feel is coming into your future. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. As I get into this energy, my head is cold. My crown chakra is open and it's alive. So there is information coming in for this group of Scorpio. Ooh, there's information coming in. So this is a group of people who are in some kind of energy that's expansive. It's exciting. Um, it is an energy of future anticipation or anticipation of the future. Um, 
there is a deep understanding here. So this is a group of people who have a certain level of understanding and depth and enlightenment in their walk. No matter what age, you can be young and feel this way. You can be young and be highly enlightened for your age, right? So we're not talking about age groups here. Um, you can be elderly and be in this energy as well. So um, that's what I'm getting here. This is for a whole tribe of Scorpio people, and it does not have to do with age. It has to do with clarity, enlightenment, and bringing in some kind of new experience into your into your journey. Um, we have temperance here next to the Three of Wands. So there is this enlighten, enlightenment and this wisdom here that's going to take a little bit of time. Now my third eye is just open with my crown shot. It feels like I'm going to go floating up into, into the sky is how I feel right now. So this group of you is understanding that whatever you're working now to come into fruition, whatever you're working now to take action on, because there is an action choice here with the Two of Wands. There's a choice here that... Um, that will connect to your fire within, to the passion within. And when we have passion, when we have the fire lit within, we take action. That's what happens when we have the fire, right? That's what the fire does. We take action. And we have the two of wands here, which is, for me, is coming out as the two of fire. You know, I've re never read the two of wands ever before like that in my life, saying the two of fire. So for this group of people, it's like you're getting gassed up, you're getting fueled up, you're getting packed up, but it's being done in a incredible, with an incredible amount of fire, incredible amount of passion. Um, it looks, it to me, it feels like you are in a way kind of moderating this energy you are understanding what's happening, that this is an energy of creation. It's an energy of forward movement, and it will take um, some. It will take some moderation here to use this energy as effectively and as appropriately as you can. So there is a knowledge here by this group of people on how to use this fire energy, how exactly to use it and to not go bursting around with it but to have the clarity of mind. This is the Eight of Swords and the Two of Swords. So um, there is some sort of coming out of the gate, coming out of the gate. I just see like this horse's um, Kentucky Derby, you know, something like that, where um, it doesn't even have to be in the United States either. Like I'm not even seeing, I it just, I just had to explain like what I was seeing in my mind. Um, it can be from, you can be all around the world, all around the world. I'm seeing all different colors. I'm seeing all different landscapes here, but there is some type of a gate that opens. And what has opened is the mind. The crown chakra has opened. The wisdom has been developed. The enlightenment has fallen in. And this gate is going to open. And it's like that horse and rider is there behind the gate. Woo, and that's how it feels. Okay, that's the image that they've gave, given me. So the, the, the jockey is on the horse. The horse is all ready to go. And the countdown is happening for this group of Scorpios. All right. So whatever's happening here, you have found the clarity. You, you have, um, you, there has been a gate here that's kept you back. I don't necessarily think it's been that long of a gate because from the image that they're showing me, you know, I mean, um, I, I just don't really know if it's been that long of a time. Um, let me get a little bit more information on the Eight of Swords. It, it could have been for some of you, the Eight of Swords can sometimes be a long time, but next to the Two of Swords, I think that there's been some sort of clarity now on why you've been in the Eight of Swords. There's some kind of clarity. See this standoff. There's a standoff. There's a gate. There's somebody here that has got control of this gate, but this gate is on a countdown and it's going to be unlatched because of the clarity that's been found here. Um, let me, let me um, check just a little, what time is it? Okay, I'm all right. So let me look here at this Eight of Swords. Six of Cups. Emperor Energy over the top of the Three of Wands. So um, there's been some sort of discipline that you have um, incorporated in how you 
think of your namesake, how you think of your family, how you think of a soul path, how you think of a um, a soul mate or a um, somebody who's deeply connected to you from, from soul to soul. It doesn't have to be a lover. It can be a family member. It can be a, a co-worker. Um, it even can be like a um, owners of a property that are neighboring each other that have to do with home and family. Um, but it does have some, something to do that connects to your roots of who you are, the soul of who you are. There's something here that has kept you um, in some sort of a thinking style that that held you back from moving forward. And it's going to be different for so many of you. I think um, I'm sensing, because as we opened this, remember, it was very expansive with the group of people that it was going to reach. There's something here that has a has had some sort of a diminishing or some sort of a hold back on how you felt in your soul's health. And this can even be a connection to another person who is connected to you in a soul way. But this is about your soul's health and expansion, the soul inside of who you are. Um, it, whatever, However this applies, it does have to do with discipline. It has to do with control. It has to do with maybe p people that are controlling you or you have been controlled by something in the past here. But it has to do with discipline and control here with the emperor. Um, I think that what it, what it means here is you're, you are taking some kind of control because the emperor came in very strongly and landed like this. So there is some sort of off balance the, there's the control issue has been off balance. Um, eight of swords. I, I, I don't think I, I want to go into the eight of swords and I'm not sure why, but I think that it's no longer really um, a concern for some of you. But for some of you, see the Seven of Swords has flipped over. There's been some sort of betrayal or theft or um, something here that's requiring you to make a revision in the way that you think or the way that you process information. I know it's hard to hear when I'm shuffling, but it's like the words are flowing and my fingers are tingling. Please have patience with me, Scorpio. I can feel this energy. It's very robust. Ten of Wands with the Two of Pentacles. So there is some sort of, um, let's see, we have two twos here. There has been some sort of situation that has been happening in real life. It's been happening in real life that's kept you in a certain place, maybe with a family member or in a relationship or at work. Um, and you've had to make some really um, difficult decisions, I think, here. I think it's been, dif the, 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 de the decisions have been difficult um, because... You, this connects to the soul and whenever something connects to the soul, you're talking about deep, profound, profound change and deep, profound epiphanies that could have kind of jolted you awake. Even when I get into those words, they kind of jolted out of me. Um, it has to do with control, controlling your own destiny, walking um, with your own spiritual team rather than with the community spiritual team. This is the strength of the individual, the healing of the soul. And there has been some sort of decision that's been made here to, to help remove you uh, uh, out of a situation that was um, pretty depleting. Um, if, you, if you think about this, this Ten of Wands energy here, we have two people um, who ha have... Um, a crop, which would, looks like watermelons to me, and watermelons are very heavy, right? They have a crop that they decided to plant um, down down in the valley, right? They planted it downhill, and their barn and their whatever their their this is up here, a home or their barn is up on the top of the hill. So they are having to for every load of watermelons, and you know that a field of watermelons produces quite a bit. In order to to sell these watermelons or to harvest them, they have to walk them up to the top of the hill. And then to get them to market, they have to walk them back down to the top of the hill. They have to walk them back down from the top of the hill. There's something quite silly in this. There's something quite, um, maybe perhaps there could be a better way, right? Maybe there could be a better way to doing this. So there, there is some sort of a situation here that you have found clarity on that you have been required to change up the way you do things. So this is juggling, juggling real life situations, deciding, okay, do I do this or do I do that? Whatever this is, it's, it's been, um, I feel something that has required you to really take off the blindfold and see the truth. 
So there could be a situation here with family or with a soul partner somehow that this kind of truth is the hardest. This kind of truth is the hardest truth to realize because it affects the soul. It affects the heart. It is the family within you. It is the roots within you, the legacy within you. And it is hard to see truth when it comes to the Six of Cups. But I see that you have seen it. And you have made some decisions here that will release you from this incredible amount of work that just really depletes you and puts you in a very exhausted kind of mindset. Like I, I'm just imagining, and I've worked on a farm in my life, just like um, probably many of you have. Um, some of you could have worked on a farm or worked in manual labor. And we know how big the field is. And I have worked with my hands and I have worked in the fields and you get very exhausted. And besides, um, you don't earn all that much money from one or five or 10 watermelons. You have to produce a lot of watermelons to make enough money um, to really make a go of it for the year. And so I, the mindset of these people, no matter if they're in a relationship or not, this, this energy that I feel is like an energy, it could have to do with a partner, it could, um, but this is like the energy of this person here, the head of this person or the head of this person. What they're thinking in their mind as they're continually have to carry these loads of watermelon up the hill, knowing that it is just a middle, it is just a stopping place for these watermelon. They have to then take them down and carry them all the way to the market, right? Maybe there's a big truck that will take them to the market. Maybe there is. It doesn't matter the mindset when you have a big field of watermelons and you have to manually carry them up the hill, the mindset of this person can get very torn and damaged and exhausted and depleted. And it could be very hard to take one step after another. That's how this energy feels the Ten of Wands, right? It, it is feeling like something else is in control. Is this house in control? Is this house in control of how you feel? Right? Does it have to be there? Does the watermelon field have to be at the bottom of the valley? Could it be planted up here closer to the house? Like there are some changes here that could possibly be made, but here's the thing. Nobody else can determine this. I can't determine this for this, um, for this hardworking person or this hardworking person. It is not my right, nor it is within my own wisdom to decide for these people. They know their land. They know their property. Maybe this is not their land. Maybe this land up here is theirs and their land is in the valley right? It's not my right to come in and just decide for these people what to do with this situation. It is for them to take it upon themselves to try to figure out what is a better way to do this. Do I need to find a different crop? Do I need to purchase some equipment to help me bring these up? What do I need to do to help this solution? So it is not something that other people can do. When you're in the Ten of Wands, it's something that the person himself or herself has to figure out for because other people do not know the situation. I do not know what's going on here really. All I see is somebody who has an awful lot of work to do. And all I see is that this mindset of these people is going to be disturbed as they continue forward. So yeah, that's all that's coming from there. I'm all distracted now. I have to put these cards back. Whew. So some kind of clarity has come forward. Some kind of clarity has come forward. There is an action change here. And I think it brings a lot of excitement here. Whether this is with a relationship or at work or within the community, there is some sort of clarity and a stalemate that's been reached. And there is somebody that is a jockey on the top of a very strong stallion ready to head out into the racing grounds. And there is a decision to be made. All right, which way do I go? Do I hurry out? Do I let the horse? I mean, I don't know that much about horse racing, although I do absolutely connect with horses, but um, there is a strategy to racing horses, right? There is a strategy to winning a race or to um, being in competition or to even just do something and change a strategy and do it in the most efficient, most effective, most powerful way possible. So there is some sort of deliberation here on which way and how to do this, whatever this is, how to do this, um, but is an energy of extreme. There's a lot of strength here. There's a lot of passion here. There's a lot of fire here with this energy of this group of, of Scorpios. Okay. Let's look what's coming in here. Let's look what's coming in here for Scorpios. 
What's coming in for Scorpios? All right, we have the Two of Cups. We have the Ace of Swords. We have the Hierophant. We have the Ace of Wands. I'm telling you, there is so much passion here. Three of Cups. Oh, there's a lot of cards that came out. My hands shake a little bit here. There's a lot of energy in these cards. Ooh, what's this one? Three of Swords. Death energy. Those go together. All right. There's just a lot of energy that came roaring out. So let me get this frame so you can see as much as possible here. And I'll let you know what these cards are before we start. Maybe I did. I can't remember. All right, across the top, we have the Two of Cups next to the Ace of Swords, next to the Hierophant, next to the Ace of Wands. And the second row, we have the Three of Cups next to the Queen of Wands, next to the High Priestess, next to the Three of Swords and the Death Energy. So the first, the, the cards that are pulling me the strongest here are the Three of Swords over the Death Energy. And I know it's the last card, but but um, these pull me first, and I'm going to go with my, with, with my sense as a reader. Um, there is some sort of new action, new action plan, um, new passion, new ignition, ignition of the flame that is resulting from some sort of transformation over something that was quite painful with the Three of Swords. So we have the Three of Swords with the Death Energy. There you are, Scorpio, right over the top of the Three of Swords and right underneath the Ace of Wands. So you're you're truly um, the center of this action. This is part of your story, right? This is definitely part of your story here with the Ace of Wands. So there's something new that you're doing. There's new passion. There's new chemistry. There is new action taking place. The Wands are fire and passion and action and chemistry and all that is exciting. Um, and and delicious in the world. Okay, so you're you're very clearly here um, in uh, front and center in the middle of this energy. It looks like to me, um, it's just so. I mean, what I see here is some sort of action with a partner. And why I'm saying that is because we have the Two of Cups with the Three of Cups. This tells me that there's some kind of a union coming into place. There's some kind of a team that's being developed or a love partnership that's coming into place. Another reason why I say that is we have the Hierophant over the top of the High Priestess. So this is a counterpart energies. And these energies are wise. They are... Um, they are, they are, they are, the words cannot express, words cannot express this connection. All right. This connection is something that the divine connected. This is something that this, our spiritual teams took part in. Whatever you believe, whatever religion, whatever you connect to, there is some sort of acknowledgement here that there is a higher power that is involved in whatever this partnership is. Because there's definitely a partnership here. It doesn't have to be love either, but it does contain passion and it does contain new action, new steps, new movement forward, however that applies to you. And it's strong. So if this is a love relationship, this might be a relationship that has a hard time slowing itself down. If this is a new job or a new business agreement or something here that you're doing new, with a partner, um, there is a lot of excitement, um, fast movement, action, um, chemistry, and a deep, deep desire to go on this journey. It's a deep calling. It's a soul path. It's something that just ignites the hell out of you, Scorpio. And as I say that, the energy runs through me so strongly that I like, after I said that, I just bit my lip. I mean, it's just the energy is really strong. 
<sighs> the Ace of Swords is here as well, over the top of the Queen of Wands. So, again, we have this very passionate energy. We have a very love energy here with the Two of Cups and the Three of Cups. It's very watery, love kind of energy. And then we have this passionate, um, passionate um, clarity. It's like what happens when lightning strikes. And the fire is ready. It's like, it's like, um, Australia. I mean, it's, it's, this is a good situation. And I know that what's happening in Australia is a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And people are, and animals and the earth is so beautiful. But it's a tragedy. This is the same kind of energy. It's an energy that is lightning that comes from the heaven and it strikes the ground and fire erupts. So there's some kind of message that comes in here, some kind of epiphany that strikes. Something here with the Ace of Swords, that there is total confidence, total confidence in whatever this is. All right, now we have to be careful, Scorpio, because not all the time I have been in these energies before. And sometimes these energies can bring us the most powerful of lessons. And sometimes they are not the most fun. So I'm just saying that because this kind of energy is, is an eruption energy. It is a fiery, passionate energy. But I bet you, and I haven't seen the cards. I haven't seen what the guidance is. But I can bet you that there is some sort of guidance here to um, make sure you look around you. Make sure you dig deep. Make sure that you are... keeping grounded in this, in the, because I don't really see any grounding energies. That said, we have the Hierophant and the High Priestess. Like, there's a lot of wisdom here. But still, even when I have felt I was wise and I have felt that I was enlightened, I have made some very interesting choices, even in these kinds of energies. So there, there always needs to be humility. There always needs to be time taken to, to connect in with the divine, connect in with the subconscious, connect in to make sure that your feet are planted and that you're not moving forward um, in a way that is potentially um, detrimental in the long run. That said, I mean, this energy is beautiful and powerful and full of passion. And it is part of the glory of the human experience. Like without these kinds of moment, moments, Scorpio, um, you know, life would not be the same without these kinds of moments. So um, this is beautiful. So whatever this is, um, the Queen of Wands is here. There's Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo here. Um, doesn't have to be Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. But um, with the Queen of Wands energy, this is having self-confidence. This is um, carrying, this is a feminine energy. It doesn't have to be a female. It can be the male as well. But this energy here, this person who has this epiphany, and it's probably you, in this fiery energy, um, has a deep sense of confidence. Um, this person understands their own beauty, their own attractiveness, their own superpowers. This person is very intuitive, very much um, in tune with how they feel and what they're passionate about and why they're taking action. Um, this person is very attractive to other people, can, quite, can very easily, very um, instinctively pull people to them because of their inner fire. And the inner fire that we carry is when we are most attractive, when we are most beautiful to other humans and to animals and to the world as when we're filled with fire. We can be filled with love, but when we're filled with fire, we, we, we pull energy to us because we're, we're ready to take action. That's always inspiring for people. And this queen of wands has the ace of swords above her. So like she, and look how strongly she's holding the wand. She's not hiding away. She's not sinking down. She's standing there and, and, and quite excited about what she's looking at and where she's going. And she knows that like, this is for her, this story. The three of cups here is union, celebration, victory, Celebrating some kind of new birth of something, something new that has begun, because it's a three. And the two of cups is a partnership. It's something that 
is um, at the forefront or it's something that is at the beginning. It's a partnership um, that is starting out on something. So there is some sort of a beginning kind of energy here. A youthful kind of energy. Doesn't matter the age, it's a youthful kind of energy. Going into the Hierophant and the High Priestess, these are two people who are um, opposite energies of each other that will complement each other. This is the yin and yang. So this allows one person to be the yang and the other to be the yin. And when we can be just one and we can have a partner that's the other, this is powerful movement forward. Right? So we have someone who's in the yin energy, in the um, very internal um, internally connected to the divine, internal wisdom, internal knowledge. This person doesn't always need to speak. This person doesn't always need to take action. But somehow the greatest feats are accomplished in this energy. Right? It's a, it's a truly um, brilliant kind of energy to be in. Then we have the Hierophant energy, which is a masculine energy of faith and trust and divine connection. It is a structure of society. It is formal traditions. It is a structure within a family. It's a structure in the rules and the guidance of a community, right? It is religion and faith in itself and the actions that we take within that belief system. So there's two people here, whether this is a big company and two people within it, whether this is two people within a family unit, two people within a community, that are yin and yang of each other. And when these kinds of people come together, there is an explosive energy, especially when we have this fire energy here, this chemistry. Again, this is what happens when we go through pain and that pain causes us to reflect and causes us to change something about ourselves and find deep enlightenment and go through a transformation. We must go through a transformation to remove ourselves from the current level of lessons. Transformation, the death energy, is always a part of moving from one cycle to another. And this tells me that this group has moved from an old cycle and is working towards or beginning to live within a new cycle. So this is a victory story. This is a victory story. It, it can be love. It can be business. I don't see any pentacles here. So this is about the internal flame. Right? This is about the internal flame, the internal passion, setting forth on something new. But there is some sort of epiphany or decision or victory here that is connected here with you, Scorpio. I see Taurus here. I see Scorpio. I see Aries, Leo, Sag. I see Pisces. But it can be any signs. Last week, I went into some really heavy energies for most of the signs. And this week, when I was in my meditation prior, I asked for something that would be inspiring for a group of Scorpios to reach into something that would be a victory and that would be inspiring so that we can hear stories of success. And these energies always connect in with people. So this is there's a group of Scorpios that, that are experiencing this right now. And it's always good to hear these kinds of stories. It gives us motivation. It gives us ambition. It gives us a reason to go through these kinds of energies here. So if you're in hardship, if you are in heartache and are stepping into some sort of transformation, these kinds of situations are what can be ahead for you as you move out of um, one cycle of thinking, one cycle of living and move into another. My beautiful friends, this is incredible. In the extended, I will look much deeper into some of these energies. And I, it's, I can't wait for it. I really can't. Okay, let's look at the guidance here that's coming forward. And I know this is dramatic, but this is what happens as an empath. When we're empathic and we get into a group of energies or we go and, and hang out and be with a group of people that are feeling a certain way, we adopt the energies. And so I'm just being very open and honest with what I'm feeling. So if this is overly dramatic, please be patient with me. This could be a situation for you that's a work situation that's not this dramatic, but it could contain the same energies. 
Um, but for me, just getting into these gen energies in a general way, it can be easy for me to be very dramatic when I get into these energies. Wheel of Fortune, Seven of Pentacles, Chariot Energy, Devil Energy. Wow. It's fire, isn't it? It's fire. Allow the fire to burn. Allow the chemistry to play. Allow the bells to toll. Move forward. Right? The devil energy is not always an energy of um, what we would think of as the devil. It is the energy that could quickly come out of control, could, could quickly move out of moderation. Right? So we have to be aware that this energy could lead us somewhere if we're not careful. If we're not careful here with the seven of pentacles, if we don't stay balanced, it can lead us to a place of unhealthiness. It can lead us to a place of destruction. But the guidance here is that the wheel of fortune is turning, that time is moving forward, that you're moving forward now into something new. Whether this is new fortune, which it can be with a wheel of fortune, and that requires careful work, does it not? To learn how to manage money differently, to new, to learn how to manage incoming revenue um, differently and carefully. If it's love, when it's this powerful and this fiery, it requires balance. So what they're saying here is in guidance is as this moves forward, there is st still some work to be done here. This is still in the early stages. When we look at the apple tree with the seven of pentacles and the farmer who is looking at the apple, we can see that the apple, unless it's a, um, unless it's a green apple, that's supposed to be green apple, which I don't read it like that. Um, this apple is not yet ripe. And so she is thinking, okay, I still have work to do to get this apple right. I still have to protect my fruit. I still have to go and find my agreements with emergence. I still have to, um, figure out who's going to pick all this fruit and how am I going to haul all this fruit? The farmer has to think of a lot of things, not only how to harvest it, how to transport it, where to transport it, who to sell it to, and how much to sell it for. And then the farmer has to think about his or her expenses. What kind of debt is involved in this? Who, who needs, you know, who needs, who has, where are the bills? Like what, what are the expenses here? And has to really figure the farming is, Farming is not just hard, it, growing. It, it, there's a lot of strategy that comes in with farming, especially as we move into more modern times. Farmers are becoming much more um, modern with the with the strategies and um, the the techniques that they use in order to require um, that they use um, to plan their crops because um, farming is is becoming very technical and it is it is much harder to earn a living these days as a farmer so you know i mean and i'm just talking about farming because this is a farmer and that's something i know about somewhat you know um, not everything or i just know a tiny bit probably but um it's easy for me to use this analogy but there is some work here to be done so it is at the seven of pentacles, which tells me that it's, it's something that is already has some, something to hold on to. There's something to hold on to. There's something that's already been started. That's why this is such a fiery kind of energy. It's, it's almost like, um, this horse is ready to go. Like this horse is now, I don't know, four years old or six years old and it's ready to go. It's mature. I'm back to the horse races again. Right. But somebody has to take had to take care of it. Someone had to train it. Somebody had to, um, first of all, probably breed this horse. I mean, um, find two horses that they could merge together to to ha to birth this horse and then train it and take care of it um, and and monitor it. And all that is done to, to gain a product or to gain. Um, I know a, a horse is a living being and here's horses. So. And I love them. I love them. And I'm not saying they're a product. I'm just saying like when we're working on something and we're starting something, whether this is the relationship, a service that we're creating, a product that we're manufacturing, something that we're doing, um, 
it's there's a full circle. It's not just a certain, you know, so so we're at a seven. So that means that that some something has really come um, a long distance already and and it's built like the fire is there. It's time for the races now. And here we go moving forward with the chariot. So there is now guidance to move forward, to move forward passionately, to move forward strongly, but to stay balanced, to stay balanced, to make sure that you're grounded, to make sure that you continue to find clarity, to make sure that you continue to connect in, um, to connect in with your, your spiritual team, to make sure that you're not um, living in, partly in an illusion, because as you're moving forward, you're heading into this fiery energy, which in itself is quite powerful and it can bring success. But if it gets out of control or this becomes too illusionary or it, it becomes too obsessive, um, it can turn into being self-destructive. So there's a need here to stay balanced, stay grounded. Here's the grounding energy with the Seven of Pentacles. Wheel of Fortune, look, it's on the ground. It looks like it's taken some time because we have all four seasons here. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. So it could have taken some time to get this wheel going. Uh, but I like the power here, and I don't mind the devil energy here at all. I, I don't think it's bad at all, Scorpio. In fact, I mean, Scorpio, I think this is an energy that you can quite um, enjoy, and, and it can be enjoyed, right? It can definitely be enjoyed. So I don't think that this is anything to be scared about. I think it's just, we, we just have to be careful to stay grounded and to stay balanced and to not allow this fire to become too out of control, right? To not um, have any kind of brush fires taking over your property or your land. And to all of you that are suffering through natural disasters on this earth, we pray for you and we send you strength. Okay, Scorpio, quite dramatic. It's 42 minutes. I am going to take a little bit of a break and I'll dig into some of these energies. Oh, man, what am I going to dig into here? You know, I would normally dig into the two of wands, but I just, I think you know which way you're going. I think there's a fork in the road and you know exactly which way you're going. So I don't know if I necessarily want to dig into that. I would normally dig into that, but um, I think there's bigger energies here. Definitely this two of cups. Definitely going to dig into the two of cups. Going to dig into the ace of swords here. Ace of wands I'm going to dig into. Oh my gosh, there's just so much. I'm going to look at what the Hierophant has to say, and I'm going to look at what the High Priestess has to say. And I think that that's going to take me enough time. So I'm going to look into these five energies. And if I have time, I'll draw a card to see who's around you and what their intentions are. But I think it's this High Priestess and the Hierophant here that's going to give us some information. That said, um, I'm going to dig into the Devil energy just a little bit more, too. Um, all right, so I'm going to dig into six energies here in the extended. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's given you confidence. I hope it's been a confirmation for you. I wish you all the best, beautiful Scorpio tribe. I, I sincerely wish you a passionate, powerful, successful, fulfilling journey moving forward. Thank you for allowing me to get into this energy. Thank you.